So welcome everybody. Welcome to um, Hot Song Podcast. Today is um, March the 28th, 2024. <laughs> I have to check which day it is that I'm on. <laughs> so we're going to talk about um, class integration again. Because last week we talked a little bit about it. We talked about how well, like what is a part and also i i kind of talked about the how to do the nlp way of pass integration so we kind of went through that and i just want to revisit that a little bit more um because like as far as i can tell is um we have a lot of parts. Why? Because we we live life. So life has a lot of. So how how does a part get created? Is whenever we have a trauma, then um, trauma of something that we've never encountered before. That's why it throws us, throws our emotional, physical states completely out of balance. And um, and if we, when we recover, then we you know keep going on life, living life, but we don't always, not necessarily, we don't always um, recover everything. Meaning that our body may be still in trauma, and and, and it's and it's unbalanced, and we may not be aware that it is out of balance that we haven't quite recovered yet. Eventually we will find out that, you know, there's something that our body actually need our um, intervention, but, you know, right after the, the trauma, right after we actually live through a trauma, we don't really know whether our body is okay. A lot of the times we are so um, emotionally, frazzled that you know checking on the body is not something that we do very much especially when we were younger younger meaning that you know um a lot of times even when we were you know kids we don't um we don't think that oh okay i have to check my body to see if you know my body has recovered you know that never even occurred to us. And um, at, when we are teenagers, no, we, when we are teenagers, yeah, every everything, most of the things in our body is still working pretty good. So yeah, we may have it a, um, a trauma. We may have a little aches and pains and unless the aches and pains is persistent, we don't register that actually some, there is still a shock in our body that hasn't quite been resolved yet. And that shock can cause issues later on in our life. And but you know, at the time when we were teenagers, we don't know that. So um, and emotionally as well, it may create a um, a certain limiting beliefs in us that we may not look at, and. Especially when we, if those trauma um, occurs when we were young, hmm. what emotional things? <laughs> it's like you know we just you know, turn on the the um, the television or put on some music or go out with friends, and we completely forgot that all these things that needed to be cleaned up. So um, over time, though, that that creates a um, a part of us that is not fully integrated back into our body, whether it is emotionally or physically. So that's that's usually how we get past. And um, we will only notice that with there there is something wrong or something that is not um, going well when we get to another more stressful times so we definitely know that we have a part when we when when we have something like 
on one hand, I feel I should do X, Y, Z, but on the other hand, I think A, B, C is good. So it's whenever you have something like that, then you know that, you know, well, okay, there is um, a part of you that really wanted this and another part of you that really wanted something completely different. That's when we know um, that there is a part because <clears throat> most of the time, we would be able to um like whatever it is that we want don't have that much of a conflict when we have a lot of conflict about you know whether we should pick a or pick b then we know that yeah there is a part so that's um and then the the nlp way of integrating a part is um to identify that there is a part. So the example that I gave last week was, so I know that, you know, my mother trained me to be a certain way. So my mother's daughter. So there is my mother's daughter. And then there is another part of me that is who I truly am innately. So then there is that, um, the, the part of me that is, more belongs to my spirit and soul so my spirit and soul wants me to do one thing and it because i am my mother's um daughter so there are other things that i really really believe that i should do and how to integrate those two because um for me anyways those two has been quite incompatible for uh, a good part of my life. And so it is about starting to find a resolution for those two. And with the NLP way of um, parts integration is to really see that, you know, yep, yeah, my mother trained me to be a certain way so that I can survive because she has learned what it takes to survive this world. <clears throat> and so she makes sure that, you know, I get a good understanding of what it is that in her opinion is the best way to survive being alive and keep myself alive. So my mother's daughter wants to keep me alive. And then the spirit and soul part of me also wants me to be alive because we came here to live in this reality so that I can have experiences. So it makes sense that you know, my soul and spirit wants to keep me alive. It's just that my soul and spirit's um, definition of experiencing life is a little different from my mother's daughter version of experiencing life. However, seeing that both sides actually has my best interest at heart really is because they both love me and they both want me to survive. So it is really in being able to um, see the underlying, what is that? The underlying common whatever it is that's common between the two that yeah on the surface there may be some conflict but underlying the 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 reasons underneath is actually very similar and in that way then these two very different way of thinking can would start to be able to find a way to coexist and play with one another so that's how the NLP way of um, integrating a part to, to parts integration works. And I didn't quite specify that. <clears throat> a big part of the NLP parts integration is really actually to see the two sides coming together. So I'm not, you know, waving my hands 
because of no no particular reason. They're actually we because we are um we have our five senses. So we actually need it to see visually and also feel the the reasons behind these two um seemingly incompatible ways of thinking that actually has a a common ground that they both it can exist. And when we can see that, then it actually you have, or at least I find that it's very easy for my hands to come together. And when your hand, when you see your own hands come together, it actually signals to your unconscious mind that that is what you want. And um, that is an important part because um, integrating something Integration is a word, um, is a word. So we know how to integrate a person, let's say, back into their environment. Or let's say when we, when we want to integrate um, an animal back into the wild, because, you know, for whatever reason that an, um, a dog maybe have a, or a rabbit may have at their um, paws, one of their, their limbs being hurt. So, you know, we take care of it. But then at some point, we need to allow that rabbit that naturally lives in the wild to go back into the wild, to be integrated into their environment. So that's one. So when it is something that is physical, we are able to um, integrate that, use that word, integrate. However, when it's something that is not physical, because an idea is not physical, the idea that I am my mother's daughter and has a whole set of beliefs that's attached to that, and the idea that I am a spirit and a, a soul here, it has another set of um, beliefs and attributes that is associated with that. When you start to integrate something that is not physical, you have to actually show your um, unconscious mind that that is what you want. And it's really up to your unconscious mind to do the rest of the work because your unconscious mind actually do the um, knows how to integrate energy knows how to transmute energy, knows how to release energy when it is needed. And um, so being able to feel that integration and also see the your hands coming together, really you putting into your, letting your unconscious mind know this is what you want. And it's up to the unconscious mind to do the rest of the work because it's not physical. So you can't actually say, okay, if I, you know, put my finger up, then it's done. Or if I, if I, you know, um, walk backwards two steps and forward three steps, 10 times a day, it will be done. There is no formula. That's, that's ridiculous. Your body knows how to transmute and take care of the energy so that what you want actually gets done and you communicate that with your body by having that visual cue and also feeling and your mind understanding that those two seemingly opposed um, and incompatible parts of you actually belongs together. So that is what I want to expand on in terms of um, using the NLP way of doing a parts integration. So I've been babbling on for at least 20 minutes now. Just want to ask, so is that clear? Did I leave or did I, you know, raise more questions? Yes, I have questions. Go right ahead. So in this case, 
uh, whatever we want to release, it's also our parts. So um, should we release what uh, or should we uh, integrate it? Because a lot of stuff what I have to change uh, in myself, it's also my parts, right? So should I release them or should I integrate it? Good question. <laughs> um, how do you release? I just... Uh, you know, concentrate on it and give the command, release that start stuff. I already mentioned that. Um, you don't know how to release energies. You don't consciously know how to release energies. It's really, it's not release. It's really transmute. You can, you can release a pen because there is there is a way you just relax with your finger and you release a pen. How do you release a thought? How? You just start to meditate. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and the thoughts does not come into your meditation ever, right? I wish. <laughs> yeah, no. I can release a pen, but how do I release a thought? You don't. You just release. Um, so it is, it is transmute energy, meaning that you start to um, let go of making something that is mm -hmm. important to you. So you let go of the story. You let go of the judgment. You let go of the emotions. And how do you do that? Well, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you just let your unconscious mind know what it is that you want. And the unconscious mind go and, because um, the unconscious mind actually know how to process energy. It, it does. But it don't always do it because it does not know that it has to do it. Because if it's something like holding on to an emotion that is, especially an emotion that is somehow still benefiting you, even though you may not like it, but it's still actually benefiting you. For example, fear. You, we don't like fear, but somehow you convince yourself that, oh, okay, this fear can actually um, protect me. So that's why when we try to let go of fear, it's not easy. So we don't do that. We let the unconscious mind know this is what we want. And then the unconscious mind actually starts to change your energy pattern so that that, whatever it is that you want to release, becomes less important. It's no longer as important to you. It does not trigger you as much. And then the next time, something else similar. When something else similar comes and trigger you again, then, um, but it never comes back exactly the same. 
it will be slightly different because you you already integrated one so um it does not come back just exactly the same anymore so that's why when it shows up in different form then you deal with that you just let your unconscious mind know okay i want to transmute that as well and then at some point when you have done enough work um then it becomes easier so it may take you you know two days the first time the next time it may be just one day and then if you do it a few more times it may only take you a couple of seconds to you mean integration transmission transmission transmutation um i already said yes we think that we use integration we use the words integration or release but it's all actually transmutation is changing it we can never let something go energy get transformed do you understand what i'm saying yeah so you you mean that if we do this releasing transmutation it means that we just uh it's can it's it can come back but in different form but when you integrate it yours and your body knows how to deal with it and it's not supposed to come again is it true it's not supposed to come again um in exactly the same way so the intensity will be less because we will be coping because we already uh, merged that fractal in us. So we are like some part is already in there. So the next time it hits us, so it will be less pain. And then slowly, slowly it will transmute. That's because we will be recognizing whatever is coming and then we are accepting it and the uh, uh, integrating and then transmuting and basically in a like to me is a simple language we'll get used to it once you recognize then you know it is the same thing it's coming and then we will know like how to deal with it so it'll be less pain less and slowly it will go away yeah so we will fully transmute it so that's good thank you Wait. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what you call transmutation? Is that releasing or integration or the both is transmutation? Or it just both transmutation, but it's different uh you know one more um uh, one more things how to release the stuff okay i think you hung you you get hung up by the words which is okay um i can totally understand why it is it can get um so what i'm seeing is that how do you release an emotion, something that is intangible. Because you know exactly how to release something that is tangible. You just release and it's dropped. But how do you release something that is intangible, that you, you can't see, you can't touch? How? Can you show me the steps, please? That's how you said you, you, you ask your consciousness to, to help you. Um. But you don't know the 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 steps. Same thing with um, integration. Like we can physically integrate something, 
we know what the steps are when it's physical but you know when it is intangible when it is some when it is an idea how do we integrate an idea we don't so know. it's actually different ways how we can help ourselves is it true um what I'm what I want to know, what I want to say is, um, as far as I know, um, a body knows how to process energy. Whether it is whether it is we meaning release or whether it is integration. A body knows how to do it. We don't know. The mind does not know, but the body does. Okay. So step one, right? Okay. So. Thank you. And, um, okay. So you, did I answer you, all your questions? Yes, thank you. Okay, good. Any other questions about the NLP way of parts integration? Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> I lost you all. Or are you good for now? Good, good for now. Okay. This is the... Now the um, next part is, um, so I mentioned that there is actually another way to integrate our parts. Um, so when we do it, how, how should I introduce this? Okay, so. One way of integrating um, our the path is really to let the unconscious mind do it. And then there is a different way, which um, it's not as easy. That's why I introduced the NLP part first. The other way is to actually allow the um, the true self to come up because um, we have been trained to be old in many different ways. So at home, we are a certain way. We, we, we're supposed to be a certain way with our family and then when you go out to work you go out then it's we need to play different roles in different situations so that is why um we actually have parts however um the other way is to actually start from the the opposite end so the first way is we start from that we have parts and then we start to integrate the parts together so that we can come back together as one whole. And then the other way is actually the opposite direction is we start from the wholeness within ourselves. And um, when we start from the wholeness within ourselves, then what happens is we start to Let's drop into the wholeness of who we are. And whenever something comes up, then we um, we just see how that that other things come up can be how it fits into us. Okay, I'm I'm not doing a very 
I'm not doing a very good way of explaining it. And I think it's kind of, um, you may need to experience it rather than me talking about it. So when we drop into our heart, when we just let go of all the stories in our mind, all the, the, the chatter in our mind, and we just drop in. So um, I know it's not easy for some people to just, you know, drop in and, and not not be distracted by their own chatter. Um, I don't mean that you have no thoughts in your mind. I mean that, yes, you may have still have thoughts, lots of thoughts in your mind, but you don't engage with the thoughts. So you don't try to um, say, oh, okay, um, all of a sudden when I try to drop into my heart, all of a sudden I feel, oh, did I? Um, and the thought will come, oh, okay, should I, um, you know, go out to meet with friends tomorrow? That thought, you may still have those thoughts that comes in when you are tuning into yourselves, but you let those thoughts just come and you don't engage. You don't try to say, oh, okay, tomorrow, you know, yeah, um, it's sunny, so maybe it's a good idea to go to the beach. You don't try to entertain the ideas. A thought comes in, you say, okay, not interested I I'm still here and then another thought will come in and then 10 more thoughts come in you don't try to entertain any of them you just allow um, yourself to just observe the thoughts coming in rather than engaging it so that's another way of doing it of um, integrating our parts. Why? Because we already are so fragmented, even from birth, because the um, we've been fragmented through generations already. So this this way of um all the parts being born with, some of them have been created, I don't know, a few lifetimes ago or a few generations ago. So you don't even know you have that part. You may get to resolve it in this lifetime or you may not. So you don't know how much you can resolve. The other way is to actually just drop into yourself your true self, whatever that is, whomever that is, and just allow that to start to come up. Um, the reason why that can work is because when you do something like that, you just drop into your heart and you just observe all the, the thoughts that comes in and you don't engage with it. It is so different from how you live the rest of the time that it actually sends a message to your self, to the part of you that is the spirit and the soul. And um, then your spirit, that part of you, the the, the non-physical part of you starts to pay attention and say, oh my God. She finally decided to give us a chance. So that's when you actually hold the space for you, the real you, to actually come in more, to be made known to you more. And then when you do that, then um, It changes how you engage with the rest of the time. 
And the more you do that, the more, the more I don't mean, you know, you have to do that. You have to meditate for five hours, 12 hours a day. I don't mean that. And not everybody wants to do that or even have time to do that. But I mean is if you set aside, let's say, 20 minutes or an hour to do that, and you do that um, consistently every day, and that actually sends a signal to your um, the energetic part of you to know that, okay, she's ready to, she is ready to receive to start to hear from us. And that's when those other parts of us starts to come in. And when the parts of us that is really who we are starts to come in, it actually fills up. And then the parts of you that don't really belong will just, your, your true self will start to change that, shift that. So it's a, a different way, a very different way of doing parts integration is that you actually don't look at the parts, but look at your true self and allow your true self to come in. And when more of your true self come in, it actually pushes whatever it is that does not um feel real to, to you, the, the, the real you, out. So that's another way. Questions? So basically we are, we are going, when we are integrating our uh, parts, we are going closer to our highest, highest self, the true self. Because I don't know, even the soul, like how we say the soul has so many parts and it lives in a different, different even planets. Who knows? We don't know. I don't know, really. Like I have probably like, you know, so micro millimeter soul part around me. And then the rest of it from the originated is all over the place. So are we integrating that or integrating the emotions or integrating with the combining the soul and the spirits together, giving the chance them to get integrated with us at this lifetime? Like how we collapse, we thought, okay, they're all the... The multiverse is collapsing, it's coming close and we are going further. And now we are bringing all the parts in ourselves. And uh, it's it's nice, it feels very nice. It It is good when I totally, I look at it, then I just put it in a simple way in my head. I, I don't know if it's right or wrong. I have no idea. Simply, it's bringing this body, making this body lighter, giving a chance to live like fully, like full life. Because when we are happier, emotionally, like detached, but still attached without attachment, but you know, the emotions are clear, your body is clear, your thoughts are clear, you're becoming more creative or you're doing things what you truly make you feel happy. So I think that's what I'm getting like a closer to my highest self or living a life what we're supposed to live and I'm free of judgment and I'm not putting labels on, never mind somebody labels on myself. Like you're saying, that, okay, no, I'm so-and-so and I do this, I do that. It's, it's, but I am doing it without, because it makes me happy. Is that, that's how it is? You're very ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
very ambitious there. <laughs> um, okay. I don't know whether we'll get there. Mm -hmm. But I do know that um, one one foot closer to the, the, the finishing line. <laughs> um, we don't know what the what our higher self has in store for us. Mm -hmm. However, um, whatever it is that's been in store for us, we will get to see it. We will get to experience it at some point. We don't have to worry that we won't get there. We will get there in some at some point. Mm -hmm. Now, is it this lifetime or different lifetime? I don't know. And, but what I know is that um, <clears throat> more you can okay. it's really to um, I don't know whether I am not sure whether it is true to pursue what makes us I think happy may not be the right word for it mm -hmm. I would say well it depends on what you mean by happy mm -hmm. content how is that okay that's a better word I like mm -hmm. I like content better because when you are doing what it is that you're supposed to do, you would know it. Mm -hmm. Like you would feel like, okay, I don't care what other people say, but this is, this, it feels right. Mm -hmm. And you, you will have energy to do the things that is really for you to do. You would feel fulfilled. You would you would feel content. Not just content as in, oh, I have roof over my head and food on my table content. It is that I am living my purpose content. Mm -hmm. You really oh. feel you really feel like, oh, okay, I can live like this forever. Because I am doing exactly what it is that I'm supposed to do here. So Did that's I... the time your true self come in. That's the time. So how do you know uh, you allowed your true self to come in? So the, when you are content, when you are... Because we... We don't know how to integrate, but our body know, our true self know. So we allow our true self to come in, but how do we know uh, how our true self is in? Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. How do we know who our true self is? Um, and knowing who our true self is is um, it's a journey, and you don't know. Meaning that it's not like um, it's not like you like because it's not something that is defined and um, invisible. So you don't have a hundred percent 
surety that that is your true self. However, mm -hmm. there are signs. When it mm -hmm. is your true self, then um, that's, that's coming in. You will start to um, encounter things like synchronicity, meaning that whatever it is that you needed to do, you will have synchronicity, people showing up all of a sudden, helping you to do something. To take you to the next step. And then after the next step, there will be some other things happening to take you a third step. So when things start to move smoothly, then you know, then um, you kind of have some inkling that, yeah, you're following whatever it is that your true self is guiding you to do. Because it may take many lifetimes for that to unfold. And we think of our lifetimes as, let's say, 150 years, let's say. Like, most people don't live that long. But let's say we have 150 years. We think that that's a long time to be able to live that. But, you know, on a physical body level, yes. If we can actually even live past 100, that's already amazing. However, at a soul level, 100 years, 200 years, even 500 years is nothing. So how do we know that it's our true self? Frankly, I don't know. I, and I don't know if anyone can tell you that they know exactly. However, if whatever it is that you guide, the guidance that you get from that part of you, when you tune in that part of you and you started to see, it's like a path opening up for you to go at it one step at a time. Then you know you are at least in the right direction. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that that <laughs> image you <laughs> that <laughs> image you have behind it, that now my I'm sitting like that because I, I think I'm confused for the <laughs> So as I understood, it's a little bit easier than Nishi um, think. What come in my mind, uh, I mean, uh, how I understood, I have to just meditate from 20 minutes to one hour and, um, you know, absorb your mind. Don't think if you're going to be happy after that or you're not going to be happy after that. You just absorb your mind and let let it be. Whatever happened, happened. And if it's going to go smooth, it means that you follow um, whatever's supposed to be, where you follow your true self. Is it right? Or it's too simple? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would actually... Okay. Um... Maybe everyone is different, but I, I only can share my own experience. Is that every time when I really was able to drop into myself, my state change, my state of mind changes to where, you know, whereas before, um, I may be happy or I may be upset, does not matter. But when I manage to drop into myself, like the true self, all of a sudden I feel like nothing matters. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Not that um, it does not matter as that, but it's like I'm in a space where nothing else can pull me out of that space. So that's my experience of when I can get 
to the, the true self. It's, it's like I'm in this space that is um, immovable. And I'm able to very easily, like thoughts can come in, I can hear music outside, but I won't be distracted. Like I don't feel like being distracted at all. Yes, I'm not interested. And um, yeah, that's that's usually how I know that it is the true self because um, there is this um, shift in the state of my mind that all the other things start to drop off because they no longer matter. Yes, I, I was able to get into a space where like I'm aligned with myself and yep, I still have to live this life and things will still happen and I still have challenges. But I know that it's going to be okay. It will all turn out fine. Does that help? Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Does that help, Nishi? <laughs> it's a perfect help. <laughs> so we have to we have to be in neutrality, right? We have to find. Um, eventually, we have to come to this um, condition, like you you did like neutrality when you like neutral to everything nothing bother you in this case universe or true self can uh, work through you yes or no yeah eventually it yeah takes a while to get there so we uh, we all should go have ayahuasca and nothing matters <laughs> <after> <laughs> I would not suggest taking <laughs> ayahuasca. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't. I, yeah. I just can't believe that how people put stuff in their body. I just can't, can't do that. <laughs> but just ayahuasca is some drug, isn't it? No, I don't know. Yeah, ayahuasca is an herb, but uh, powerful yeah, drug. <laughs> powerful, <laughs> powerful herb. Um, I'm not seeing not to well okay um something like ayahuasca or you know these or magic mushroom or those things yeah it can shift it can open up things for you however um it's a temporary opening and is it good or bad i don't know some people have really good experience with it some people have horrible experience with it so um what i i don't recommend it because um when you actually because um, we can actually achieve that state ourselves just by doing the the just by allowing the true self to come up when the true self come up yeah it's better than smoking magic mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> you have access to a lot more things. And it's and because you've actually done the work for it, you can actually sustain it. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you take drugs, it only happens or it like it's it's there when the drug is there. And you don't and then once the drugs are uh, worked out of your system, what next? It may open some doors that you're not ready to look into yet. Or <clears throat> so um, when you do it, when you really do the work, then you actually expand your consciousness um naturally i like natural things 
Yeah, uh, that's what is Shiku said. That too, exactly the same. No, if you work, then it's much better. Other than that, like sometimes you open up the doors which you are not fully aware, and then you might bring something bad, what not you supposed to pick it up. But then, you know what? <laughs> Make, up yeah. your own mind. Make up your own mind whether you want to have that experience or not. I, I'm not judging. So <laughs> I'm just saying that, you know, I wouldn't be doing that. No, but I was just joking just that that is a different story. Um, no, I, I understand that, like, how it is a little bit confusing. The, but then when we really... I got up to the collecting the fragments, the, the fractals, fragments, or the, the parts, however you name it. And moving further with that, is it am I connecting to my highest self? Like we, we have the same question, how do we know this is my higher self? So I think we, we are working. We should not think like 10 years down the road, whatever, or 20 years or five years or two years, it doesn't matter. But at this moment, what I am learning, I'm grateful to you what, what I'm learning. Uh, thank you. So I'm making progress. I'm making progress for within myself, with with my knowledge. It's, it's bringing me to the higher vibration, a little more knowledge. And I'm living in it, not just like... I, I feel big difference and I, I look forward to your the classes like Thursdays and the Saturdays if I miss it and I go listen back to from YouTube or through the email. But yes, I when I listen more and more, it does stick into here. So from here <laughs> it, it comes to here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you. And and I want to encourage all of you to um try it out. Try it out to um drop into yourself. To do that because I can only teach you what I have learned from that. You may have access to a lot more. So when you, whenever it is that you're ready to do that, you start to, most important is to hold the intention that you want to drop into yourself. And when you do that consistently, then your true self would take notice that, you know, okay, it's not just talk now. You're serious. So your true self will start to come in and teach you exactly the way that or to expand you in probably much more spectacular way than I possibly can. Because I'm I'm doing the best I can. Is it a part of a contract like we when we came here from our true self thing that, okay, we will be going to the earth realm to play and I, I will finish this, 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 this experience or lessons and it is we have to finish it before we go further? Not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily. Um, I can't say definitely yes or mm, no, because there are some experiences that is crucial. And then there are some experiences that, you know, if you don't have it this lifetime, you can always take it up another lifetime. Mm -hmm. So it, it really depends. So not necessarily. However, um, yeah, there are certain things that you came here to do. Yeah, like Alan Green, he says, like some 
some things we do put it we say we we talk our soul we talk our soul talks oh are we ready like the physical body is ready to to take this challenge and then we say no 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 i'm a week or whatever put it in the next week or next month and then it, some of them they go to a okay, next lifetime i'm not ready to deal with with this now so that's why we carry over and over in a different some some stuff right mm -hmm. yeah thanks Vinny, a few years not few long time actually ago i um attend some webinar uh, and one of the light worker, she talked about high self, how she connect to high self. She she told us that she just reach with her hand and bring it down to her, like and and give the command connect uh, or unite. I don't remember. Does it have a sense or or it doesn't have no sense? Um, it is possible, yeah, it is possible, because, you know, even um, Sifu James mentioned that, you know, as certain, like, there are layers and layers of energies around our physical body, and each layer has um, certain access, so that's why, you know, at... Um, it's about, you know, Three hats about, about about 32 inches, then then it's, it's fifth dimension, like all of those things. So it is possible that you know when you pull that energy in, that that means because she has set up a signal for herself that you know when she does this, then she gets connected. So you know that's when she does that then yeah, it can work for her. But um, will it work for you or someone else? Maybe, maybe not. So you have to, to set up that signal as well. If you intentionally do that and then like, okay, when I have my hand up here and I put it down, then I'm going to be connected to my higher self. And then you feel to see if you do. It's it's a basically same the attention we are putting out there with actions. Yeah, and then you check for the results. So you check for the results as well, mm -hmm. and see that. Um, but <laughs> I have a but there. Higher self, you know, <clears throat> there are many. Higher selves. Higher self simply means a part of us that has more access than, you know, our current consciousness. So, um, but it could be just, you know, one step higher. But we actually have, we can access many steps higher as well. So, when she says higher self, which higher self does she mean? Mm -hmm. Even one step higher, it's already higher. True. Yep. If that's good enough for you, then, you know, get, definitely set up that signal with yourself. Uh, higher self and true self, it's the same. Um, good question. To yourself. Um, I don't know right now. I really don't know. True self. I think of true self as being um, higher than the highest than the higher self isn't that that should be the original one the origin original <clears throat> the yeah. diamond we we are 
that is the highest like there's nothing above for ourselves that that will be our original the true self so it's not higher self it should be highest self it seems that there are many versions of us at a different uh, uh, dimension have a different ourselves so <laughs> we have many many of ourselves yeah. Yeah. True self and higher self, the definition um, is, I can only go by feeling. When I say true self, higher self. So when I say true self to myself, feeling is deeper. When I say higher self, um, it's a little different. And when I say highest vibration self, yeah, that seems to be closer to the true self. But that's my my verbiage or the, the way I understand it. We but you know the way you understand it may be different. So you have to try for yourself. When you say true self, just feel in your body. Because your body has assigned or, or you have assigned certain meaning to what true self means. And you have assigned meaning to what you know higher self means. So um, for me, true self is closer to the highest vibrations self. But for you, it may be different because um, we come from different backgrounds. So these words may mean something different between you and me. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Other um, comments, questions? No? Okay. You know what? We have 15 minutes. 14 minutes now, so 